Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. This is a public information viewing brought to you by the Squire Ministry for Jet Base Shenanigans and Atomic Age Nonsense. 1944. Hello there, cinema viewers. As you all know, the war in Europe is coming to an end, with Britain at the forefront for all new revolutionary technology. Why, in the last five years alone, we've developed over 20 variations of the Spitfire. That's right, it's still a world beater. Probably. Meanwhile, the Germans have wasted their time and resources by forcing out an operational jet fighter, the first footage of which was captured by this triumphant bomber crew. Hello, gunners. Aircraft approaching from the port side. Hello, skipper. Roger that. What is it? It's... it's... It's completely knackered our bomber. Right, well, we better report this. Tell you what, you lads grab the parachutes and I'll write a letter to Winston Churchill. Now, what did it look like? Well, it didn't seem to have a propeller, sir. No propeller? So it's some kind of attack glider we're dealing with here, then? Well, possibly, sir, but it came past at 400 knots. Really? Must be frightfully windy out. Now, whilst this ME-262 might just be able to handle a bomber, it'll prove no match for Gloucester's all-new Meteor! Yes, that's right. We, the British, have got our own new jet fighter in operation, too. And it's almost certainly faster, more maneuverable, and better armed than its German counterpart. Probably. So if you're a country and you fancy equipping your air force with the all-new Meteor, they are available for purchase. Why, it's also ideally suited for downing Herr Hitler's buzz bombs. Oh, it's exploded. I mean, it's exploded in value! 1945. As our brave boys advance through Germany, they're commandeering many examples of useless and outdated German equipment and bringing them back to Blighty for testing and evaluation purposes. Like this obsolete ME-163 rocket interceptor, or this vintage flying wing by the so-called Horton Brothers, or even this dated 50-ton Panther tank, yes, experts have agreed there's nothing useful here. Meanwhile, and all by themselves, our daring design boffins have come up with a radical new vehicle. Why, the Centurion Tank, also weighing in at 50 tons. Why, see, it's unique and never done before sloped frontal armor. Sure enough, the Germans could learn a thing or two from this revolutionary piece of design. And why, look, it's another variant of the Meteor. This one can operate from aircraft carriers. Yeah. And here we see the Soviet Red Army conducting a victory parade through Berlin. Yes, and the Russians are keen to show off their new jet. We think it's another yak, which we're quite sure isn't very good. Not when compared to what Britain has to offer. Like another meteor. It's got shorter wings now. Yes, the Russians here showing off their doctrine of quantity over quality hardware. What's... what's that? What the bloody hell is that? Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, it's sodding huge. Excuse me, viewers. Somebody find out what the hell that thing is! And cut this bloody video! Cut it! 1947. Now this is the Conway Heavy Tank Destroyer. Why housed in this subtle and ergonomically designed turret lies a 183mm gun, which extensive field testing has shown can punch a hole straight through the toughest of opponents. And here we see a formation of Boeing B-29s. Wait, hold the phone. Those aren't Boeings! Yes, and I'm getting reports now that the Russians have reverse engineered and then built their own version of Boeing's B-29. I think I speak for all British people out there when I say that we're very angry about this.
I mean, why, oh why, didn't they copy the Lancaster? It's miles better than any Boeing! Right, that does it. The Americans may have cornered the Soviet bomber market, but let's see if we can't monopolize the Russian civilian airways sector. Oh yes. What we're going to do is take the Rolls-Royce Neen out of this supermarine attacker and then sell the Russians 50 of them, but for civilian uses only. Yes, these high-performance engines will be permitted for non-military use only, and we'll make them sign something to that effect. Then, once they realize how good the engine is, they'll have no choice but to purchase thousands from us at great cost. Fiendish. 1950. Good news, gentlemen. So it turns out, the Russians did indeed like our engines. Yeah, they liked them quite a lot, actually. So much so, that it now powers their new state-of-the-art jet fighter. And since China just joined into the Korean War, and they've brought with them a fleet of said jet fighters, along with a load of Russian pilots to fly them, we're in a spot of bother. Still, just as long as nobody tells the Americans, I think we might just get away with it. Wait, what? Oh, what the f***? You call me loving mother f I swear to God, when I get out of this f***ing plane, you know the idea what we're gonna have to do now? We're gonna have to f***ing invade Russia, you know how f***ing bad that is? Awfully sorry. Aha! A glorious victory! Why, this is the Hawker Sea Fury, a propeller-driven plane. You see, whilst Britain is at the forefront of technology, we're also highly traditional. It's why we still have the Queen and postal strikes. Yes, good old propellers. I mean, you know where you are with a big piece of rotating metal, don't you? Take the London Eye, for example. Not too fast and very safe. Now that's British merriment. Anyway, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please dispatch a like via Carrier Pigeon or via your new Gloucester Meteor. Special thanks go to my Patreon pledgers, as always. The men and women out there who keep this irregular assortment of video beast lunacy going. This one in particular was sponsored by Charles Timms, so thank you very much, Charlie. Special shout outs once again go to Digital Digging and the Gaming Soviet for use of their lovely voices, and to my my good friend Averick for his CDK skills. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Cheerio!